Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys how to achieve this flawless, glowy makeup look. It's gonna be all about skin, all about face products, all about setting, and the things that I do to get my makeup to last all day. Um, anytime I go out to a special event, a wedding, or anywhere where it requires me to wear a full beat down, believe me when I say I don't bring a touch up powder. I don't like touching up, I don't like adding anything else unless I truly need it. And if I get oily, I just bring blotting paper with me and that's it. But other than that, I wanna make sure when I leave my house, I'm good, I'm locked in, and I am gonna, you know, be game all day. So in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys how to achieve that. I'm also gonna be sharing a lot of tips and tricks, a lot of skincare products that I'm loving, and I don't know, just pretty much how to achieve this look. You're gonna see the zero to 100 happen right here. So the first steps I like to do for getting that flawless skin, flawless makeup, flawless, canvas is starting off with skincare. Skincare is the most important step because it's really going to help you not only for the day, but in the long run. So I'm gonna go in using Pixie's Vitamin Wake Up Mist. I'm gonna do it from a pretty far distance because it's kind of like to shoot out a little bit. There's a lot of good ingredients in here. There's orange blossom, citrus extracts, there's lavender. There's all kinds of good stuff in here. So it instantly wakes up the skin and gives you all the vitamins your skin needs. Next, I'm gonna go in with a current favorite of mine, and this is the H2O Beauty Illuminating Booster. I have been loving this product so much. You can actually use this as a moisturizer or as a serum, but I love using it as a serum because it goes just a little deeper into the skin. And what this does is it pretty much gives you like an instant glow to the skin. It literally helps to illuminate your skin. It makes you look a lot more radiant. It wakes up the skin. Pretty much does the whole nine yards. I do three pumps onto my skin. And I don't know if you guys can tell, there's little white microbeads in there. But those are the microbeads that have the booster in there and they're filled with vitamin C, cucumber, and lemon extracts. So I'm just working this all over my skin, going in circular motions and then in padding as well. But those little beads are really gonna help to just instantly brighten your skin. And as you can see, you have like that instant natural glow. It does feel very hydrated as well. And what's great about these boosters is that they have the illuminating one, they have a hydrating one, and then one that is a wrinkle fine line reducer. So they have a variety of different ones you can use depending on what your skin needs a boost of. So now I'm gonna be taking in the H2O Beauty Water Bright Moisturizer. This is a really great daytime moisturizer. There's SPF 30 in here. There's also vitamin C as well. You just need two pumps and I'm just gonna rub, work them really quickly into my fingers. So I'm just gonna work this in circular motion and then just slightly pat it into the skin. And it's really important that you moisturize no matter what type of skin type you have, whether it's oily, dry, normal, it's always so important to apply moisturizer because to me, if you want that picture perfect makeup it's they're not looking at the eyes they're looking at the whole face so, so it's really important that you prep your skin prior to doing your makeup so now that I let my skin absorb the serum and the moisturizer it's time to put some primer on and we are going to be going in with the Smashbox photo finish hydrating primer this is also a very important step and one of the steps that I do not skip ever because not only do I want my skin to you know obviously intake all the good I'm putting in there and all the vitamins and all the good ingredients but I also want the makeup I put on my skin to last all day and look good as well and I feel like anytime I skip primer I notice things shift or you know don't last as long as I usually want them to so I love using this hydrating primer because obviously I am on the drier side so I find it to be very hydrating and very nourishing for my skin and also for me um, I personally feel like I just did all these hydrating products to throw in a matte primer on top of that and matte myself out would just waste everything I just did so because I want to keep that hydrating luminous look um, this just been this just helps look in general so I put about maybe like a piece of amount on there and I'm just kind of pat it where I need it mainly work it around and then now just kind of spread it out and i'm mainly focusing it right here in this area along my lap lines my chin and then my forehead so now i'm going to move on to foundation and i'm going to be using today the max studio Fix Fluid Foundation. This is an OG favorite of mine, and I feel like sometimes I just roll myself back into it because I know it wears good, I know it looks good throughout the day, and I find my skin to look a lot more flawless when I wear this one. Um, certain foundations, when I go out to events, I always fear flashback. I always fear that it's gonna look crazy after a few hours, and this one to me is just kind of one that I know never does me wrong, no matter what. So I use the shade NC35, which is a little darker than my actual skin tone, but I don't mind it because I like to I like to have a little more of a tan. I'm gonna take it in with the Morphe E31 uh, Flat Kabuki Brush, and I'm just going to first kind of just stipple it onto the skin, and I always try it around my jawline because I have a little more breakouts right around this area and more discoloration. And then from there, I'm just gonna pat my way up and then just kind of over it. 
Now, I don't always like kabuki brushes. I personally love beauty blenders. Sometimes I feel kabuki brushes make a big difference. They make the skin look a lot more softer, and I feel like you will, you can really blend it out, and then if you need more, you can go back in with it, as opposed to the beauty blender. Sometimes I find myself applying more than I need, than I need because a lot of it gets absorbed in there, so. Um, you know, I go back and forth on how I feel about it or what I'm going for, but I normally just tend to do this first and then add more when I'm done if needed. So next up is concealer. To me, this is a part of my makeup routine that I never want to take out because I love the way concealer looks. Although I don't always want to wear that much makeup, I love the way it looks and I love the way concealer, what it does to the makeup. You know, it really just helps to enhance features and brings everything out and just brings life to the face. So throughout the years, I've gone through cycles of concealers. I've tried different brands I always try to change it up and I feel like I've been around the family with the concealers like I have tried them all and I always go back to a few of them or I always have like my my go-to so one of them is the MAC Pro Longwear. This is one of my favorite concealers and I feel like I always go back to this sometimes. I'll just wear it. I actually use this when I do cut creases and I love the way um, it cuts the eye. It just looks amazing. So this is a favorite of mine. My second favorite would be the NARS Creamy Radiant Concealer. It, it just wears so perfectly. It lasts all day. It looks amazing on. And then the last one is obviously Shape Tape. Like Shape Tape to me is was the game changer. And since then I haven't found anything that I truly love as much than those three. I've always been kind of a full coverage person be, mainly because I have the freckles and one of the reasons I don't really show my freckles off when I wear makeup is because I feel, to me personally, it looks like discoloration. Anytime I try like a sheer concealer, I find myself having to apply so much on because I want coverage. And what happens is my freckles show through and sometimes the undertones in the concealers don't really work with the undertones in my freckles. So they make some look gray or ashy and it, it just doesn't come out the way that I envision it to come out. So that's why for me sometimes I wear minimal to nothing in makeup or I wear the most. I really don't have an in-between. And trust me guys, I've tried it all. I've done it all. I've, I've tried so many times to rock my freckles and makeup looks, but I find myself going back to the glam look. It's something that I personally have always loved. I just haven't felt comfortable showing off my freckles like that with full glam on. I don't know if that makes any sense to you guys, but to me, that's just how I feel. So for this look, we're gonna go in with the Shape Tape because it's a favorite of mine. So I'm gonna go in with this and I'm just going to first and foremost just Kind of start right up in there. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pat this out. Going in very light patty motions. So now that I blended that out, I'm gonna go in with this makeup brush from the makeup shop. And then now I'm just gonna blend out the edges. And I'm going in very light stroking motions. Kind of bringing it into where the shadow is at. And then from there, I'm just going to go up and down around the nose area, just cleaning all that area up. So I just applied a little more shape tape onto my brush, and I'm doing it now on my left lines and my chin and my forehead. This is also an area you don't want to miss at all because this is an area where the light hits first. And to me personally, if I feel like if I don't lighten up certain parts of my face, I can look a little dull, especially in certain lightings. You do not want that, so... Just going to lightly buff this out. All right, so now that we applied the concealer, foundation, all that, I'm going to go ahead and set my makeup with some setting spray first using the Urban Decay All Nighter. This is their long lasting, oil free, temperature control, long lasting makeup spray. It does everything. So I'm just going to spray this all over my skin. So next I'm going to go and set my T zone and I'm going to be using the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish and this is in the shade Light. I'm going to be grabbing this small brush and then just lightly dabbing it into my T-zone area, and then my lip area, and then underneath of my eyes. So I'm gonna go back in in a little bit with the translucent powder, but for now I'm gonna go in with some bronzer, and I'm gonna be using the Benefit Hula Bronzer. And I'm gonna grab this Morphe E4 brush. I'm gonna start pretty much right around there, and I'm just going to work my way kind of back, and then lightly forward. And then from there, I'm just going to, again, work this around my around my hairline. And this is just going to give me a really soft, subtle bronze. Um, this bronzer isn't very orange, and it's not very, it's not muddy either. It's like a perfect bronzer, to be honest with you. So now that I've bronzed my skin, I'm going to go ahead and contour my nose, again, with the Hoola bronzer. And I'm going to be using the JD Weighty 180 Nose Contour Brush. 
this is literally a nose contour brush it's amazing um jade came out with a variety of brushes and this is one that is so freaking good so i'm gonna start uh pretty much at the ball of my nose And then I'm gonna grab my beauty blender now and then just kind of lightly tap over the sides. It just gives it like a really nice airbrush finish, not taking away the lines entirely, but covering up the harsh lines. So I'm gonna go in with one of my favorite highlighters at the moment, and this is Maybelline's Master Chrome Highlight. It is one of the best drugstore highlights. Like, I literally love this highlight so much. Literally a dupe for all those highlights out there that are like 50, 30, 40 bucks. So I'm gonna go in with the Smith 112 brush. Is that not like, is it, does that not say like, I look expensive? It's so good, I love it. So I'm just gonna dab this onto my forehead area. And I like using a fluffier brush like this because I feel like it's really dense, it applies a good amount on. Um, but it's so easy to blend out as well. And then I'm gonna grab the JD Weighty brush and then I'm gonna take that onto the bridge of my nose. And then just adding a little bit to the ball of the nose. And then you can also hit your shoulders as well. And then I'm gonna be applying the translucent powder. This is really what's gonna give it that soft box finish. It's really gonna help make everything look super smooth, last all day, and then lock it all in. So I'm picking up my beauty blender, I dipped some in there, and I'm gonna pretty much dust off the excess amount on the back of my hand, and I'm just going to pop this where I put my concealer at. So while I bake for a few minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and apply a little bit of liner and lashes, and I'll be right back. So I'm gonna top off my lips using my 951 Ultra Satin Lip Pencil from my collection with ColourPop, as well as the lip pencil that goes with it. Alrighty, she is done, she is complete. So this is a finished look on this makeup tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned some new tips and techniques. In the comments below, let me know what your favorite go-to flawless foundation is. I love hearing what you guys are using out there and I always like trying new stuff. Um, so if you guys love this video, please be sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you are not. And thank you again for watching. I will see you guys in the next video.